Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will see how to create your own asset category and get it registered inside the right click menu of Content Browser. Here is our custom object. So let's get started. Let's create our 5.1 project. We'll go for a blank C project and we'll call it custom category and we'll create it our editor is up and running we'll close it and we'll go to custom category queue and uh, right click here add a new Unreal plugin we'll just call it custom object the template will be blank and we'll just add it now that our plugin is added we'll expand it right click on our custom object and add a new unreal module we'll just call it custom object editor and we'll set the module type to be editor and the loading phase you can leave it to default and press ok this will add a new editor uh, module to our plugin we expand the source let it sync the projects and here we have it our custom object editor we'll close it for now first things first we need uh, an object to be created inside the content browser so what we'll do is we'll right click on public we'll add a new unreal class we'll just call it my custom object you can call it whatever you want but just go with it and uh, we'll set this to be blueprintable and blueprint type we'll add some properties so this will be the custom object that we will create using our right click menu inside the uh, content browser so to do that we will need a factory and we'll create our factory inside the custom object editor module before we create it we will first need to add a dependency here for Unreal Ed and Asset Tools. We'll save it and we'll go to the private folder and wait for the projects to sync. We'll right click on the private folder, add a directory called Factory. And inside Factory, we'll add a new Unreal class. We'll call it Custom Object factory and this one it will inherit from u factory we'll add some methods over here so first constructor and we'll override the factory create new we'll then create the definition for both these functions and inside here we will make sure we can create a new factory and it's editable after that and we'll also make sure the supported class is u custom object okay for to to access that custom object we need to add a reference to our uh, custom object module so now that it will be available here wait for the projects to sync and now we can add our view my custom object static class so we'll remove this we will create a new object new object we'll make sure it's our uh, custom object and we'll set the owner to be the parent we'll say supported class since we have defined it here and we can, can pass the name parameter and the flags and we'll return this proxy object and make sure this is you my custom object and that's it for the factory part and now we need to create our custom category 
inside our uh, content browser, right? So to do that, we'll first open the editor module where, where the startup module function is located. And here we will add e asset e asset type categories type and we'll call it custom object category and we'll set it to none if it's showing red we'll just include the uh, the type from here and we'll add a dependency for that module also and we'll save it and then we'll go to our startup module uh, function and inside here we will register this custom category that we just created so to do that we'll get a reference to asset tools and we get a reference by going to f module manager and lot we will check for the module called f asset tools module where the module name is asset tools and we'll just get it now we can uh, register the category this custom object category here so we'll say custom object category and we'll get the asset tools and we'll register advanced asset category and for the category key you can just call it whatever you want i'll just call it a uh, custom my custom and then we'll get a display key so we'll just call it my custom category so now we have registered it we'll get back to this uh, startup module function later so we'll just close it for now and now we need to create uh, asset type actions so to do that we'll go to private and we'll create a new class called uh, asset type actions custom object and this one we will inherit from f asset type actions base inside this class we will create a new constructor for the custom object that we created we will have it asset type categories we need to pass our advanced uh, category that we created late, uh, before and we'll call it asset category we need a, a name to display so we'll pass that as well and optionally maybe a color too so we will pass that and we'll set a default color of black i like black that's and uh now we need to assign these uh, these variables so we will have our variables here the asset type categories type to assign these variables we'll just assign it inside the constructor itself so asset category set it asset category a name to name and color color and we'll override our functions from asset type actions base from this one so we'll override the name function first we need to uh, specify a class as well so for that we will just override the get supported class function and we'll make sure this supports you my custom object static class that's it for the uh, asset type actions so we'll close that we'll go back to our startup module and here is where we register our custom asset actions that we created to do that we will uh, open the the module here and we need to save a reference to all the asset action types that we are creating so to do that we will have an array of shared references that takes asset type 
actions. The reason why I'm using I asset type actions is because the asset type actions, uh, the custom object asset type actions is inherited from asset type actions base, which itself is inherited from asset type actions. So we will use that. And we'll just call it a uh, registered uh, asset type actions. And here we will create a private function because we don't want this to be accessed from anywhere else. We'll create a template and we'll call it class T. And then we will have the function itself register type actions. We can pass a display name optionally, so we'll call it f string. Um, we'll just pass, uh, maybe we'll just call it name. That's it. F asset module. We now have access to our asset tools. So this is where we register the asset type action. So to register an action, we need to create one. So we'll create an action using the make shared function. We'll make sure we pass T because we are creating a templated version. So we will pass T and this T will represent the asset type action that we created here. And our constructor takes the asset category, name and color. So what we'll do is we will we'll pass the asset category that we created here. So we'll just type asset uh, custom object category. And for the name, we will pass f text from string name. And this we need to save it to registered asset type actions. So to do that, we'll just type constant auto action. And then we will add it to register type actions. Um, action that we just created right now and we will finally register the type call with by calling register asset type actions action okay so inside the startup module we will now call internal register type actions and here we will call f asset type actions custom object and we'll just call it custom object. Now when we're shutting down the module, we need to remove it. So we'll first get the uh, asset tools module pointer. So asset tools module pointer and uh, just call it like this and F module manager. We'll type get module pointer F asset tools module has the name as asset tools if our asset tools module is valid we'll get the asset tools from there asset tools and from the pointer we get it and then we iterate over all the actions that we register and we'll simply unregister them. Just call it action. And that's it. Can be moved to if statement, so yeah, why not? There you go. Let's compile and run. Okay, we got a bunch of errors. And if you look at the last one, it's, it's saying that the uh, get categories function is not overridden so we'll go to asset type actions a custom object and we will override that function so we'll show you in 32 get categories and we'll just return asset category the one that we saved and that's it we can just debug and start first make sure our plugin is enabled and then if you go to content browser there we have it my custom category and custom object these two names can this uh these two names can be customized so if you want to change my custom category 
you have to go here you can change it from here my custom category right here and if you want to change this custom object you can do so right from here so uh, that's it i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and good luck in creating your own assets and your own categories thank you have a great day bye bye